Okay, our first one is kind of cool because our first question today is from Mark. Now, I know Mark because Mark is in my, uh, I call it the inner, well, no, it's not the inner circle. I call it the coaching circle. Um, it's a, we, we meet once a week, oh, for about an hour to two hours, uh, a group of us, and we discuss things. And uh, Mark is one of the members. I wanted to see if the Easy Strength program could be used to prepare for a strongman contest. Before I even get going, Mark, I love this question, but I'm going to say this. That is how I trained when I was trying to break the world record in the weight pentathlon. I had three shots at breaking the world record in the weight pentathlon. Each one of them has a story. Each one of them breaks my heart. Uh, I talk about it in one of my books. I'm not going to talk about the cheese sandwich story because that one just breaks my heart. Uh, the other one, when I was way ahead of the pace and the meet official said, yeah, we don't have any men's javelins, but you said you'd have all the equipment. Yeah, well, we didn't bring any javelins. So there's five events, shot, discus, hammer, weight, and javelin. They brought all the, uh, uh, all the equipment except for javelins because, you know, that would have been one of the five. But one of the ways I trained for these weight pentathlons was I used easy strength in the weight room, but then I also used easy strength in my training mentality. It was very often that I would throw all five events in a training session. Now, I don't agree with this all the time, but in a weight pentathlon, I liked it. I would do the first event. I would do it as best I could in the order. Sometimes it depended on who was on the track or something like that. I had to be a little careful sometimes. But as I recall, if I, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. It, it goes hammer. It goes hammer, discus, javelin, shot weight throw, 35 pound weight throw. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. It's just not that big a deal. And that, cause the, one of the things I wanted to find out is what was my real life conditioning like? And what I began to notice as was if I just trained the 35 pound weight by itself in a throwing session, you know, I threw really well, but if I threw the weight, the, the weight after the other four events, I would, I would lose a lot of feet. What that did was prepare me mentally for what was going to happen in the competition. I knew that if I was throwing, uh, it, oh, how do I say this? So this is what I threw if I just threw the weight by itself, you know, by itself, real fresh. But I threw a lot less when I threw it after the other four events on a hot day, dehydrated, even though I drank a lot of water, it doesn't matter. So I got used to the idea that here is my training number, but here's more like the number I'm going to reach in competition. Boy, that was a helpful thing. I want you to put that lesson in first, Mark. So we'll go this. I have been doing easy strength for the basic lifts for the last few months, and I'm loving it. I have a strongman contest coming up in December. The events consist of a log press, an axle deadlift, a truck pull, a Hussafel carry. Oh, that's that triangle thing. Yeah. And Atlas stones. Can I use easy strength program to prepare for the contest using these five events as my lift? So there's there's two sides. Do you just want to train uh, like for a, a month, two months with just doing those exercises? Yeah, I think there'd be real value. But the thing is, you got to think easy strength. Let's just say you're doing the log press and your best is 12. We're just making this number up. Well, what I would suggest is, to, I mean, not six, but maybe like three sets of three with with that log press that you know you can do 12 with. But here's the deal. You're gonna do that five days a week. So at the end of the week, that's gonna be 15 sets of three. And if that's too easy, or and but or you just vary it, if that's too easy, well, next time do two sets of five and get a sense of it. If that's too easy, so play around. Now I know you can add weight to the log press, but you know, I don't get your get what you consider your competition weight test it and then come back. Uh, for the axle deadlift, uh, just think, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing three sets of three on whatever you decide on that. Uh, put the truck pull at the end, the Husaval carry and Atlas stones. What I would suggest doing with the Atlas stones is finding the one that's the most reasonable for you and do it daily, you know. So you're practicing, you're never tapping in but you're practicing the event. Um, for the Husaval carry and the truck pull, 
I would do those last and with the Husaf I'll carry. So say like you do it a hundred meters, okay. Well, try try it maybe even loops. That's not a bad idea. Have maybe 20 meter, uh, put cones at 20 and figure out a way that you can um, easy strength that carry. Now, just picking that things up, it's going to be really, uh, it's going to really hit you hard, but just be reasonable. Now on the truck pull, I don't that was the only one I looked at that. I was like, how are you going to do that every day? Because you're, I'm assuming someone's driving, but you could probably just hook up a sled. But if I was you, I would just hook up a sled and do that with a little bit more speed and go for more distance. Because the other four movements are going to hit you hard there. You're going to jackhammer that hard. And with that one, maybe we can get a little bit of work capacity on there. Now, is that is that going to work? I don't know. That's why I want you, like you to try this as early as you can. When you do the weight pentathlon, and this is something I picked up on, I would talk to my competitors. In fact, one of them even wrote like a booklet or something on it. And I noticed that most of them would only do, like one of them did, he did like day one shot, day two discus, day three javelin, day four hammer, day, day five weight or something like that. But my knock on that was, you're doing this highly technical movement once a week. Now, in the weight room, you know, if you talk to Marty Gallagher, I think you can get pretty damn strong uh, just lifting weights one day a week if you do it Marty Gallagher style. You have to have perfect technique. You probably need to be in a community. And like Marty would suggest, we're doing a 12-week linear load up. We're going to do eights. We're going to do fives. We're going to do threes. We're going to do two one, twos. And then we're going to do ones. And then you got to make that eight. And then, you know, three weeks later, you got to make that five. And, you know, you got to make that top end lift after every single week. Marty explains it better. Um, could you do that? Could you do that one day a week? Uh, his blog is called Raw. And you might have to go back a little ways to find it. Um, his, his, it's called Raw. Uh, and this is one day a week training. But you're going to have to do technical movements more often, no matter what. So if you decide to do like one day a week, Sunday or Saturday in community, Mark, you're going to go to a, a gym and do those lifts with spotters and encouragement. And there's your single weight workout. But I think on the events I'm looking at, from what I know, and I don't know much, but it seems to me of that list, the Atlas Stone and the Log Press this is just me looking. I'm probably wrong, and I'm sure I'll find out in the notes. <clears throat> but those seem to be the most technical to me. So those would be the ones I would, I would suggest doing three to five days a week anyway. Uh, on the truck pull, I, it's, you just got to want to win that. Uh, on the, and then there's, so I would say log press, axle stones, most technical. Uh, the truck pull, least technical. However, it'll do most for your uh, work capacity. And then the carries and the deadlift, those are right kind of in the middle-ish of the examples I'm giving. So if you were to do every day the log press, every day an axle stone, both reasonable weights, and then three days a week uh, do the carry and the axle deadlift, and if you sled it every day, I think that's not a bad idea. And maybe one day a week, if you can make it happen, do that truck pull. Uh, this is a, um, you know, I have worked, and it's been a while. It's been sneaking up on two decades. Really, it's been that long. I used to work with strongmen quite a bit uh, about 20 years ago. And for whatever reason, I I, I'm, I guess I'm not the pretty girl, the new pretty girl at school anymore. They, they found somebody else. Um, and the, I came up with a number of variations to help strongmen. Uh, the thing that the feedback I got from them were, were two things. The deadlift walk, that's when you deadlift the weight and walk with it. And the other uh, exercise was these variations I came up with the press. So there was one walk where you walk like this, the weight's in the rack position, every so often you stop and press and walk. The other one is you walk with the weight overhead, locked out, every so often you bring the weight down, press, and then walk again. 
Um, there's, of course, with kettlebells, you can do the seesaw walk press, which may or may not have value for strongman. It's just, I mean, it's a good exercise. I mean, who's going to know? I mean, who knows if it carries over or not? But I think that might be a, a good a good idea. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> a couple of things real quick. First, uh, Mark, thanks for asking. That's a great question, and I'm very, very impressed. Uh, the other thing, too, is that Mark is on my online uh, coaching group. Um, I mean, if you have interest, uh, we sent out a big thing to everybody who's on the uh, who's on Dan John University. I think we might have mentioned it in Wandering Weights or in the weekly email, but uh, we uh, we kept the group very focused and narrow at first. Um, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how do you say this nicely. I don't want to sell anybody about joining the group. Either you want to be in or you don't. I mean, the, the last thing I want to be in in an intentional community. By the way, so my training system is called Intentional Community. A whole bunch. It's happened just yesterday. Um, I had some somebody from Idaho, somebody from California, uh, somebody from Wisconsin, and somebody from Kentucky, and myself all in my gym yesterday to train with me. They all showed up to work with me, and I th I'm sure they all left very disappointed. Um, we come together on purpose to be in community. I don't want to have to have some. Uh, I hate using the word prima donna because I've been called that. But I, I don't want a prima donna group that's like, well, what about me? I, I want people who are there to build up other people. Uh, as anybody who's ever coached or taught, the person who learns the most is the coach and the teacher. I mean, that's, that's true. So the more you help others, the more clear you get about what you want. Um, the most... <laughs> This is going to sound awful, but I've always felt the most selfish act I do is uh, <laughs> being, being more of a giver uh, because, you know, the more I give, the more I seem to receive. And I don't mean it that way, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. Um, well, listen, uh, Mark, if you don't mind, finally, you've got to get back to me on these ideas. I gave you a number of ideas, uh, which is the appropriate thing for me to do. And you and I can talk about this in the future and make this better or worse. But there's no question in my mind that the more reps you do, the more practice you do, the better you'll be on the day of competition. There's nothing new what I just said right there. All right. Thank you, Mark.